Welcome to our webinar on safe physical activities in the after-school setting. This webinar is brought to you by the Leisure Information Network through the On After School project. Throughout this webinar, you will receive information, instruction, training, and resource information that will assist you in providing your participants with safe activities in the after-school setting. We will discuss the importance of safety in the after-school setting. We will identify the five criteria every program leader should consider, and we will demonstrate your learning in a specific scenario. Physical activity is one of the key components of the after-school program. Physical activity provides the participant with numerous physical, emotional, and social benefits. However, an unintentional consequence of physical activity is exposure to the risk of injury. All physical activities have an inherent element of risk, some more than others. The following chart on causes of Canadian injury hospitalizations comes from the Public Health Agency of Canada, which outlines the numerous causes of injuries and deaths for children 0 to 14 years of age. One of the largest sections we see is falls without playground equipment, followed by being struck by or against, then falls with playground equipment. Is this consistent with your experience or practice? These injuries are by far the most common cause of musculoskeletal injuries in children treated in emergency departments and the single most common cause of injury related to primary care office visits. In your role working with children, what do these statistics mean to you? Hopefully your thoughts connect to the role you play in prevention. The primary responsibility for ensuring safer practices rests with the facility and its employees. Potential risks must be identified and procedures developed to prevent or minimize incidents and injuries. For a safe environment, the after-school leader will be aware of up-to-date safety information, plan activities with safety as a primary consideration, supervise children and youth to ensure safe practices are being followed, have a plan and act quickly in case of emergency, and show foresight. The Ontario Physical Education Safety Guidelines represent the minimum standards for risk management of physical activities provided by school boards in schools and other settings. The Ontario Safety Guidelines provides minimum standards for the following safety criteria. Equipment, clothing and footwear, facilities, special rules and instructions, and supervision. The Ontario Physical Education Safety Guidelines are available free online at safety.ofia.net. We'll now take a closer look at safety considerations all program leaders should keep in mind. Safe planning in the after-school setting should include medical information and physical limitations, accommodations, safety expectations, first aid, and emergency action plans. And when an injury occurs, complete the appropriate reporting procedures and forms and take actions to reduce the possibility of a recurrence. For medical information and physical limitation program leaders are to access participants' medical information as acquired by the supervisor, to be knowledgeable of the participants and their medical information physical limitations prior to participating in physical activity, to know how to assist the participant in managing their medical condition or physical limitations during physical activity, and to know how to respond to emergency conditions. For accommodations, they are usually specific to the child and their condition. Accommodations can be made to the equipment, facilities, or activities where appropriate. For safety expectations, communicate to the participants the risk associated with the activity and how to minimize those risks, along with expectations for safe conduct and good behavior. For first aid, check that a first aid kit is accessible and also check to see if there's a suitable means of communication on site. For emergency action plans, be knowledgeable of and implement the site's emergency action plan. Suspected concussion protocol and universal precautions when dealing with situations involving blood or other bodily fluids. You can find the key factors in planning safe activities addressed in more detail in the Ontario Safety Guidelines. We will now highlight each of the five safety criteria contained on each sports page of the Ontario Safety Guidelines. These five criteria are equipment, clothing and footwear, facilities, special rules and instructions, 
and supervision. The first safety criteria to examine is equipment. This slide contains the generic safety criteria, which affects all activities when addressing the safety component of equipment. The activity-specific equipment safety criteria is addressed on the individual activity pages. The minimum requirements include inspection of equipment. There are two types of inspections are to be done. A detailed inspection carried out every month. The results and actions are entered in a permanent record with a follow-up and next steps as part of the maintenance process. There is also a visual inspection carried out by the staff or activity provider prior to the activity taking place. When visually inspecting equipment, the supervisor and program leader can refer to the supporting documents section in the After School Physical Activity Safety Guidelines, the Appendix Gymnasium Equipment Checklist. Where damaged equipment has been identified, remove the equipment and replace where appropriate, and report damaged equipment to the supervisor. As a side note, program leaders are encouraged when participating in the activity with the participant to wear protective equipment for their own personal safety and to provide role modeling for the participant. The second safety criteria to examine is clothing and footwear. This slide contains the generic safety criteria, which affects all activities when addressing the safety component of clothing and footwear. The activity-specific clothing and footwear safety criteria is addressed on the individual activity pages. The minimum requirements include running shoes that have a flat rubber treaded sole that are secured or tied to the feet, running shoes with higher heels, wheels, rubber, plastic, or metal cleats, open toes, open heels are not appropriate. Appropriate clothing can be shorts or sweatpants and t-shirt or sweatshirt. Where participants are wearing their school clothes and or outdoor clothing depending on the weather and season, it is important to check that the clothing they are wearing does not present a hazard. And finally, jewelry. Follow the organization's expectations. Hanging jewelry that cannot be removed and presents a safety concern must be taped or covered. The third safety criteria to examine is facilities. This slide contains a list of the generic safety criteria, which affects all activities when addressing the safety criteria of facilities. The activity-specific facility safety criteria are addressed on the individual activity pages. The minimum requirements include an inspection of the site, which there are two types, a detailed inspection carried out every month, the results and actions entered in a permanent record with a follow-up, and next steps as part of the maintenance process, and a visual inspection carried out by the staff or activity provider prior to the activity taking place. A complete list of items to be inspected for the facility can be found in the appendices Gymnasium Facilities Checklist and Outside Facilities Checklist. Another minimum requirement is safe traction. The surface where the activity takes place is to provide safe traction for the footwear required for the activity. Another minimum requirement includes playing area and surrounding perimeter free of hazards. The most common cause of sport injuries results in children colliding with objects in and around the activity area. For indoor sites, no equipment or furniture are to be stored around the perimeter or corners of the gym or room. For outdoor sites, hazards such as immovable goalposts, fencing, signs, or natural hazards such as trees and boulders are to be identified to the participants and located at a safe distance from the activity. Another minimum requirement are the walls as turning points or finishing lines. A designated safe zone in advance of the wall or object must be established. Where hazardous situations have been identified, identify and block off the hazardous area, report the situation to the program leader or supervisor, and select an alternate activity area or activity for the participants to be active. The fourth safety criteria to examine is special rules and instructions. This slide contains the list of general safety criteria, which affects all activities when addressing the safety component of special rules and instructions. 
activity pages, special rules and instructions contain the specific safety criteria for the activity. The minimum requirements include warm-ups and cool-downs, which are one of the most important factors in injury prevention and should not be neglected. Unfamiliarity with the activity or game. With the growing number of participants who are immigrants, new Canadians and children from varying cultures, we cannot take for granted that all participants have played softball or ice skated previously. Prior to the activity, it is important to survey participants to find out how many do not have experience with the activity or game. Where appropriate, demonstrate the skills necessary to play the game safely. Another minimum requirement is adequate hydration, which needs to be readily accessible to your participants, especially during hot and humid days. Check that the participants are not sharing the same bottle of water. Another minimum requirement are the outdoor weather conditions. Before the activity, the program leader is to take into consideration the temperature of the day, the pollen count, smog advisories, and whether the grass has been freshly cut, and the length of time participants will be vigorously active. Participants must also be made aware of ways to protect themselves from UV rays and insects, and the supervisor is to be knowledgeable of the emergency response to severe weather conditions and provide instructions to participants. The fifth and final safety criteria to examine is supervision. This slide contains the list of generic safety criteria which affects all activities when addressing the safety criteria of supervision. The activity specific type of supervision requirement and safety criteria is addressed on the individual activity pages. The minimum requirements for supervision include a supervisor at the activity site, a physical presence of the program leader who is visible, circulating, vigilant, assisting participants, preventing potential incidents, enforcing rules and resolving conflict is needed. A supervisor who is knowledgeable of the activity and rules of play is another minimum requirement. The program leader communicates the rules of play and expectations of conduct and behavior to the participants. If the program leader is unfamiliar with the skills and rules of the game, they are to refrain from the activity until assistance from the appropriate support staff is received. Another minimum requirement is a supervisor who is aware of potential risks. The program leader communicates to the participants the potential risks of the activity, demonstrates how to minimize those risks, and provides rules and procedures for safe play. The criteria for effective supervision, as outlined in the previous slide, apply to all types of supervision required by the activity on site, in the area, or constant visual. The activity-specific type of supervision required is addressed on the individual activity pages. The minimum requirements include on-site supervision, which is circulating throughout the activity site and always in visual contact of the participants. In the area supervision, which is in the vicinity of the activity site, but for brief periods of time, visual contact with the participants is not available. When this occurs, the supervisor informs the participants of his or her location. And constant visual supervision, which applies to high-risk activities, is being present at one activity with constant visual accessibility of the participants and the activity. When working with children, it's important to identify and address safety concerns related to physical activity. For a child or youth with a disability, you may need additional safety measures. In addition, some sports or activities may not be suitable for persons with certain types of disabilities. Here are some safety factors to consider when working with children and youth with a disability. Is the activity appropriate for the age and development level of the person? What are the person's specific safety needs? Are there specific health concerns related to the person's disability that might be made worse by participating in the activity? Is the intensity level of the activity safe? Is the equipment safe? What about risk? Some activities or disabilities require a high level of supervision. Are all clients with a disability aware of the facility emergency procedures? And plan for safety, but allow dignity of risk. 
excessive safety concerns hinder the person's ability to experience physical activity. Close communication with parents or caregivers of children and youth provide parents and caregivers with a menu of activities you plan to provide in your program for their input as to how to safely accommodate their child. Reference the resource, Moving to Inclusion, which provides information about accommodating students with disabilities. For more information regarding this resource, contact Active Living Alliance for Canadians with Disability at ALA at ALA.ca or 1-800-771-0663. For more information, please don't hesitate to contact us at one of the following URLs. Thank you and have a good day.